one of our favorites here. Super solid guy, great player. He's going to do everything with you guys today so you guys can uh, see how the drills are done through somebody else and not just us every single time. Uh, with that being said, though, Connor is going to stretch you guys out as long, along with uh, me. All right. We're going to go ahead. You guys can drop your gloves and everything. I'm just going to right arm across, jump right into it. Really feel that stretch in the shoulder and the triceps. Swing it out, switch arms. Go ahead and swing it out and then right arm back. Go ahead and switch it. We're currently just stretching on with so you can join in whenever. Go ahead and swing it up. We're going to do a different variation of arm circles again. Being pitchers, pitchers and fielders, we're throwing a lot. Arm care is the most important thing. Got to really feel that burn, get that stretch going. So we're going to go ahead, palms up, small arm circles forward. Go ahead, face your palms towards me. Still small arm circles. Really feel them shoulders working. Go ahead, palms down. And start feeling the burn now. And face the palms backwards. Feeling it? <laughs> All right, go ahead and give you guys some hugs. Take them loose. Now we're going to go ahead and go backwards. Small arms are backward. Palms up to the sky. Go ahead, face them towards the screen. Palms down. Really feel that burn now. And palms back. Head shake out. Going again. Let your arms relax for a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead, spread the feet, do some trunk twists. So stretch out that back. Try to keep your head still. Now we're going to go ahead, bend at the waist. We're going to do some windmills. Get that lower back. From there, we're going to go ahead and just touch the ground. Just like yesterday, when Coach Payton was saying, get your hands on the ground like you're feeling the ball, go ahead and get the backs of your palms on the ground. Really stretch the back of those legs. Go ahead and go to the right. And you guys can switch to the left. Really feel on the inside of your leg. We're gonna go ahead. Stand straight up, grab the foot, pull them in the back, feel the stretch in the front of your leg. 
is going to be great for everyone who's pitching because balance is very important. Go ahead and switch legs. And shake them out. How are you guys feeling? Feel good, nice and stretched out. All righty. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. We're gonna go ahead, grab a ball. Always working in that four seam grip. We see the horseshoe. We're gonna grip our fingers right across it. Having our fingers go across all four seams, right? Go ahead. We're just going to work on breaking the hands. We'll start in the middle of our body. Lift up like our leg is a table. So I'll go ahead and do from the side for you guys. Our leg is like a table. We can set a glass of water on it, right? Nice and flat, staying balanced. We're going to go ahead and break our hands over top of it, like our hands are an egg and our legs are a pan. We're breaking the egg, thumbs down and thumbs up. Grab them up here. So it's going to be one fluid motion. Up, break the hands. So thumbs down, thumbs up. Really in that shoulder up there, pointing at our target, right? Go from the side for you guys. Pull. Really focus on those hands going. Straight down. We're not trying to fly back, right? Then we're going to start winging our arm. We're going to just nice and controlled. And here. This right here is kind of where you determine how the pitch is going to end up, right? If your arms, you don't extend your arms correctly, your path of travel for your arm slot isn't going to be there, your balance won't be there. That's why you kind of tail off with your pitches here and there. So focus on, again, get your hands and thumbs down and then keeping that balance, okay? You should be able to hold it there even after you break the egg. Go ahead and, see some of these. Go ahead and break the egg, guys. Nice, Hanwin. Brett, I know it's hard, but that looked good. Nice court. Yeah, Jack. All right. So from here, we're going to go ahead and do a balance drill. Just like last week, so some of you guys know it, but for you guys, we're gonna go ahead. We're going to start, start a little bit like let me just come back up here. So our feet, normally we're here, correct? Your front foot is gonna just be a little bit in front of your back foot. So the front, the leg that you're lifting is just gonna be a tiny bit in front of you. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna lift up, get to a good balance point. Go down, up again. We're gonna go over. Back up, down. Then from here, we're gonna just sink into our hips. Try to show our back pocket or even our whole butt to the catcher, right? We're gonna sink into our hips and let it take us out. So I'll run it through with you guys again and I'll do it from the side this time so you can see it. See how my front leg's in a little bit out front? We're gonna go ahead, lift up. Down, up and over, up, down, up, sink to the hips and let them take you out. This is really gonna get your guys' legs activated because when you're throwing off the mound, your legs are what generates your power. Your arms are just there for the ride and controlling where the ball's going. All of the power and velocity comes from your legs. 
the more you guys use your legs, the healthier your arm's gonna be, the better you're gonna feel. Arm care is the number one thing for fielders, pitchers, anyone. Without an arm, we can't play, right? So let's see a few here. Mason, you're looking great. Nice, Jack. Nice, Maverick. Nice. You guys are looking great. Perfect. All right. From there, we're going to do a new drill. So this is new for you guys that have been with us for a while as well. We're going to go ahead. We're going to spread our legs nice and wide. Hands in the middle. We're going to lean to our front side, lean to the back. See how my knee's staying on the inside? The reason we do that is so that we can explode out, right? If that knee is leaking out, we're losing power, we're losing velocity. We want to keep that knee in, keep everything driving towards the catcher. So we're going to go ahead, lean, rock in, and throw. Everything's nice and controlled, really feeling those legs get activated. Lean, in, pull. It's almost like you guys are doing a slide step. Instead of lifting the leg all the way up, we're just going from the down position. That looked good, Mason. Both Mason. <laughs> All right. Nice, Paxton. Connor, make sure you explain the slide step to them. They probably don't know what that is. Yes, sir. So the slide step, guys, is when you guys have a runner on and you just have to get the ball to the plate as quickly as possible so that they have less time to steal. Instead of our legs coming all the way up and getting into our nice bounce position where we can load, set a glass of water, right? We're gonna be here. We're just gonna deliver as fast as we can, driving everything through the ground, low leg kick, and we're here. I know some of you guys probably aren't really stealing yet and all that, but it is a very important part of, the, of pitching because it really keeps the runners on first base or second base, wherever they're at. All righty. Nice. Go ahead and do a few more here. All righty. Now I know we were talking mainly about the legs. Now we're going to focus on our upper body and really finishing because when we're here getting our glove point where does this glove go we're not trying to bring it down here because then our arm will fly open right you want to bring that glove into the chest so it's nice and strong everything's coming straight down to really emphasize this i want you guys to have your glove open like wide open you're going to go ahead point with the glove open, and then when you're getting ready to throw, you're going to squeeze and bring it close into your chest. Like it's that is mine, right? You see something, just bring it really close into your chest. So if you guys have a partner that you're throwing to, or you're throwing into a net, choose one little thing on.
in their shirt. If you're throwing to a partner, choose one little part on their shirt. Like for me, we would say the B. You would point out the B and bring it into your chest. Bring your body through and really get in that throw right to the chest of the body. And with the net, you guys can go ahead and choose one little square, point at it, and bring it into your chest. And this is an explosive movement, guys. So we're going to go ahead, do our leg kick, thumb down, here, boom, and really explode. We want to be explosive with that movement, bring everything down the middle, finishing over the top. reason why we bring the glove into the chest is so that everything is nice and compact. Our arm stays in the right slot. We can finish strong over the top so that our legs are doing most of the work. If our glove starts to fly out here, look at where my arm goes. It goes out, right? That's going to cause a lot of, a lot of tension in the elbow and shoulder, which is never good for throwing because we want to be healthy. We want to keep our um, arms healthy and strong so that we can keep playing baseball, right? So focusing on bringing that glove into the chest is going to really help with accuracy, velocity, and arm care. Now, So we worked on this one last week, and for you new guys, this is a towel drill. You guys have a towel with you or a shirt laying around, you can go ahead, create a little knot like a baseball. If not, that's okay. You can always just use your hand. What we're going to really do is focus on getting out there and finishing over the top. Our bodies want to be in line with the ground. So we want to make an equal sign with our body in the ground. So when you're finishing, you're here and your body is going to be chest facing the ground and your leg will be up. So we're going to work on really following through, boom, and then getting ready to feed. I'm going to have Mason demonstrate this one. This is, if you have a table or something soft that you can reach out for, Go ahead, get yourself a good distance away. Go ahead, through, and reach for that table. And bring it through, body follows, get ready to feel. So make sure you're gonna your body. Go ahead, grip like a four-seam fastball. You're gonna be further back. So with us, we have a bucket here. That way. Yeah, there you go. Load and reach for that bucket. See how you follow through. Get back to what you want. Right now we have Mason doing this for us. Boom. That looked perfect. Really reaching out, getting that full extension, and then getting ready to field. And if you guys want to really, really challenge yourself, you can scoot back a little bit further. Make yourself really explode to that bucket or table, or whatever you're trying to hit, and whip it down. Boom. The more extension we get, the longer that, or the closer we're getting to the plate, the less time the batter will have to see the ball. And the more power we're gonna have behind it. Let's see Mason do it. Boom. Guys are looking great. See a couple of you guys got some towels out there. Nice. I love it. Nice, Jack. Nice, Brett. For this, we're just really focusing on 
finishing, bring our chest parallel with the ground, creating an equal sign, and then being athletic, and getting ready to field the ball. Let's see a few more here. Nice court. That looked great. Go ahead and do a couple more of these and then coach Peyton will come in and we will he'll talk about catching and if you guys aren't catchers do not leave because we will be going over fielding as well so don't you guys worry go ahead finish up with your last ones here nice max that was beautiful righty you guys did great coach Peyton will come in get you guys stretched out a little bit more, get your legs activated, and then he'll jump into catching and we'll do some fielding. Cool, cool. like you said, we're gonna stretch these legs because we, as whether you're a catcher or an infielder, your leg muscles are what you're primarily using. And I know you guys aren't really throwing right now, so I'm not super worried, you got a pretty good arm stretch. So let's just start by touching our toes for about 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go ahead and spread out. Pick a side to lean to. And five, four, three, two, one. And same thing to this side. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, then we're going to the mobile squat. But I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick that you can do with it today. Um, I know a lot of you don't have partners, but if you have a tennis ball, you can use a tennis ball as a wall, and it'll do just the same effect. So you guys know what the mobile squat is. We're over here, and we're shifting from side to side, right? Working on our mobility, our stabilizing muscles. So inside uh, Mason today, I'm gonna throw some balls at him while he's doing this. Uh, for those of you who don't have a partner, what I mean by a wall of tennis ball, you can really shift side to side, working on hand eye coordination while doing this. So for Mason, I'll go ahead and throw some baseballs at him. We're gonna really get those legs feeling the, the juicy blood flow while we're doing this. Gonna do it a little bit longer than usual. Um, just because I think it's important for you guys to really focus on being able to move spot to spot as catchers. You don't really focus on that too much. This is, guys, this is also very important as an infielder because you got to be able to have side to side movement, right? Not every ball is going to be right at you. Sometimes you got to explode to a ball to either side of you. So having this mobility and being able to just stay down and keep control of your body, that's super important. So this works great for infielders, outfielders, catchers. It's gonna do wonders. I want to ask you guys, as a catcher, what do you think the most important aspects of being a catcher are any any ideas opinions raise your hand um you, you you tell me what you think what do you think your 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 primary job as a catcher is any guesses i know mason maverick you guys usually have some oh when you got something all right i'm on mute bud all right, to tag, you uh to tag the runners tag the runners as in like they're stealing home yeah Okay, that is important. You definitely, oh, yeah. it oh, yeah. definitely is something we can work on. Make sure they don't smash into your leg either, like what happened in 2011. It is definitely a very important uh, topic. That is, I'm glad you brought it up because uh, it's not something people realize is catcher, you're going to get tackled a lot and you got to be able to take the hit while making the out still. Um, so 
Good job. Anybody else? Any other opinions? Oh, let's see, Court. Court, what's up, man? I'm blocking the ball. Huge, 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 huge. Right, as catchers, you catch or block the ball. Right, that, that's what you do over and over and over and over again. We are supposed to be the best at doing that. So really good. Uh, any others? Anybody else? About like throwing runners out, right? We gotta be able to throw runners out accurately, quick, efficiently. Um, and then also, we are the quarterback of the field. A lot of you might not know that yet, but we are calling the plays, right? We're telling the pitcher what we think should be thrown. We're setting up where it should be thrown. We're watching the fielders. We're letting the infield know what plays to make. Are we doing a fake throw to second and pumping it to third? Are we um, throwing it to the pitcher and having him throw it right back home? Are we trying to get people in a pick out, uh, pickle? So all kinds of different things to be thinking about um, for you guys as catchers. So that being said, making a throw second, first, or third quickly and efficiently, we're going to work on our uh, transfer drill, right? Where we're here and we're here real quick. Super easy, but again, we're doing this over and over and over again, right? And there's a reason we're practicing this over and over and over again, because reps make us faster, better, quicker, and more efficient. So I'm going to have my buddy Mason here. He's going to set up. He's going to practice just the transfer, right? So a lot of you guys should know by now, but for those of you who don't, right, we're starting here. So if you don't have a partner, put the ball in your glove, mix it up, right? Make sure it's not exactly how you expect to grip it, right? Because it's gonna happen a lot. So we're here and we're literally turning our glove into us, right? We're grabbing and we're breaking the egg up here, right? We'll start down here, right? Same thing, we we'll start here. I want you guys to practice painting those corners, okay? So start in each corner, so here. So we'll go to the next corner, here. We'll start low here, right? So you can get that movement down from all around, not just down the middle. I'm gonna toss the ball to Mason while he does it. If you guys have a tennis ball, again, do it on the wall. So catch it and quickly transfer, okay? Because you're not gonna be able to control where that tennis ball bounces. So we'll do this for a little bit. Just get this motion down. So a warm up for us as catchers, right? Get everything nice and smooth. Work out those mechanics. All right, ready? Just the transfer. What am I getting up? I don't know if you guys notice while Mason's doing this, he's actually already in an athletic position, right? He is burning his legs, I'm sure, but that's okay in a game. We're not gonna be in a lazy position, right? We're in a nice, athletic, ready to explode out of the box position. He's already standing up on these and he doesn't even need to. He's just in an athletic position, ready to explode, right? It's, a, it's almost embedded in his mind, right? And that's what we're going for. So when we're doing this, we'll start here, right? Then we hop out and transfer, right? Nice and balanced, hop out, transfer. Super easy, but it is tiring and that's okay. If we're here to grow the muscles, right? Make it something that we don't forget. All right, we'll do a few more and then we'll move on. Where's my baseball? Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. Take a look. So now you guys know what this kind of looks like with a partner, right? So a lot more productive than just sitting there with the glove by yourself. But again, if that's all you have, you can still make do with it. It does definitely benefit you. All of this will benefit you in some way or the other. So now we're gonna add, right, the speed, the anticipation to it. So does anybody remember what the anticipation is? What does that mean as a catcher or a middle infielder for those of you who are in field? Does anybody have an idea? Any hands? No? All right, so the anticipation for us as catchers or infielders, right, is we're predicting what's going to happen after we get that ball or while we're getting that ball, right? So we're going to anticipate where that ball goes, but we're also anticipating that throw to second base, first base, third base. So help us do that 
as we're in the catcher's position, right? We get athletic, all right, we're anticipating where the ball is going to come. As catchers, we should already know, okay, it's here. I already beat the ball in the spot, so now I can start twisting my body, right, towards wherever I'm throwing. So if I'm throwing a third, I can start twisting this leg and driving it towards the third base. What that does, it takes off all the pressure from this leg, your, your leg that you pivot with, or your front step, right? So now I can move this wherever I want, right? And I can explode out of the box faster versus if I'm flat-footed, right? I catch it, then it's a little bit more of a drag to get up. Now, if I anticipate it, I'm here, I've got it, boom, I can explode out of that box. So all we're gonna do is continue to work on the speed, but now add some anticipation into it. So we're here, catching the ball, boom, right? Super, super, super efficient. Your body literally will naturally do what it has to do on its own. You can just anticipate the direction of where you're throwing by moving that leg, okay? It doesn't have to be anything crazy, right? I know a lot of people who literally set up like this, catch the ball and think they'd be faster. That's not, that's not what it's about. It's literally just twist. Just this twisting motion changes the whole game. It feels so much better. No pressure on this leg, and you just sweep it out. It doesn't even have to be a big step. Now you're exploding out of the box quicker. So we'll practice going to first, second, third, whatever. Uh, I'm going to throw some balls at my buddy here, and you guys can practice doing the same. Again, if you have a wall, throw it at the wall, practice anticipating it. Um, and then if you want, pump that throw, second, third, first, whatever. It doesn't hurt by just doing the motion, OK? All right, let's do it. Uh, we'll start with third. We'll do a bunch of third. Okay. Now, real quick, something I want you to try. So you're in the booth, right? Now, without me throwing the balls, twist your leg to that bag. That leg right here. Twist this so you can get drive down a little bit. And you guys have this leg has no pressure on it. Now all I have to do is just like that. It's okay, take some getting used to, but it's probably going to get lost in that. All right, so now we're going to do uh, second base. The second base is a little bit more because I'm here. Now I drive it even further. So I'm here, catching the ball, boom. Again, just step out and throw. Now we're going to go to first base. So for you guys who are practicing throwing to different bags, first base can be a little bit tricky. You really have to focus on where you're driving that leg. So again, you're still driving it, um, but it's going to be a little bit weirder to get this foot out there. So we're here. We're rotating. Now you're in the general position. I can step out like this, or if you have the flexibility, you can again take that wide pivot body will rotate as you're coming up. So here, do it in slow motion a few times. It'll flick on how it's supposed to feel. So I'm anticipating it. I catch the ball here, that's fine. My legs are in the position I need to go. All right, you can just do this over and over again. Pretty, pretty easy the more you get used to doing it. Um, but I know for some of you guys at first, it's gonna burn, it's gonna suck, but that's okay part of the game, right?
So I know we promised some fielding and I didn't add too much of the fielding into it. So now I'm gonna add something for both you catchers and you fielders to do. So you're at home, right? You talked about anticipating the ball. So place the ball in front of you, doesn't matter where. All right. We're gonna start at our, our creeping position. And what I mean by creeping is like before pitcher even throws the ball, right, as he's pitching it. You're, you're figuring out what you're going to do. You're going to slowly start participating by creeping in, right? So we're going to start our creeping position. Our gloves out here so we can come up if we need to, or we can come down if we need to, right? We don't want it stuck between our legs or anything crazy like that. So we're here, creeping, we're creeping. Okay, the ball's hit. Now I'm going to anticipate what I'm going to do. So if it's a slow roller, obviously we can take a banana. But right, for right now, we're going to pretend it's a pretty decent ball that's been hit at us, we're going to break down the field. So creeping, we're creeping, right? Break down, our feet are going towards the diagonal, right? We're anticipating that throw. So, we'll step with our left, sorry, our right, we'll stand with our left, and look where I end up. I get that ball, I can make a clean throw first. For you catchers, um, I think it was uh, Hawin that brought this up, that, again, we have to anticipate the runner coming at us. So we have some footwork to do also. So we're starting from here, we're coming out, right? We're receiving that throw. Once we receive it, we're dropping in with our shoulder, covering that line, staying as low as possible, putting all our pressure on that lead leg that's protecting. So I can show you with the plate real quick. This is actually pretty tricky, um, but it is highly important so you don't get knocked down. And feel embarrassed from here. We run out about a few feet up the line, not too far. We're ready to receive the ball. We drop over top of the line and we race right back. If you can, drop a little more forward. That way you're not flat footed and they knock you back. Okay? So again, up the line, receive, drop down. That's all it is. The infielders, put that ball in front of you. Creep, creep, creep. Break down. Boom. Pick up that ball and go. Work on that transfer. Okay? Work on that transfer. Whether you're a fielder or catcher, it's super important. Mason, I'm gonna throw some balls at him. He's gonna come up the line. I'm gonna throw it. Fielders, you can do exactly what I just showed you to begin with. What you can do, help yourself out. You infielders who are uh, who may not be catching right now, work when you're doing your footsteps. When you get get the ball, work on throwing each base. So if you're a first baseman, work on throwing a second. Work on throwing a third. If you're a third baseman, keep shuffling towards first. Do your shuffle step towards first, towards second, towards home. And if you're a middle infielder, act like you're getting a double play on some. Nothing wrong with working on those on those footworks. Footwork is very important, especially for middle infield and for catchers. Everyone can work on them. Uh, for you catchers, something that I should have thought of earlier. Uh, when we're protecting that line, and my buddy Mason here brought it up, it's almost like we're going into a drop and block, right? If it's in the air or on the ground, it doesn't matter. We're gonna, gonna transfer into a drop and block. It's like we're blocking the runner now, right? So that way you're more planted, <clears throat> you're more grounded, and there's no chance for his foot to slide under you or anything. You, you're literally here to a drop and block, okay? Doesn't have to be a perfect drop and block, just something that you would think would block a ball or a person, okay? So if you're standing up and you're trying to tag him, you have a chance to kind of push you out of the way, swat your glove, take your knees out or whatever. Um, but if you're grounded, he's not gonna go through you. You're gonna hold on to that ball and you're gonna end up okay. 
even if he does knock you over. Also, if it goes on the ground, then you're already in the drop of block, so you can block that throw and make the tag. All right, guys, now we're going to do something uh, kind of fun here. Um, this is something I just, and not many other people did this, uh, but it actually did help me quite a lot, and it turned into something that I could use for fun on the field, which is a fake pump to second and a quick throw to third, okay? So the reason you would be doing this is you've got a guy on first, you've got a guy on third, right? They send that guy from first to sec second, right? They're stealing so they can draw the catcher to make that throw so the guy on third can score. Um, what we can do to help ourselves out is fake that throw to second, right? And draw that guy in from third to come to you. And once he realizes you still have that ball, it's too late. He's either in a pickle or you can just tag him. Um, I know, especially at your guys' age, I could pull this off all the time because I practice it. This is just something I watched the pros do and I wanted to do too. So we're gonna practice on selling that throw to second, okay? Um, there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, you can figure it out, you can tape yourself, whatever's the most convincing, but you have to be thinking of it from the guys who's watching you from third. You gotta be thinking of it from his perspective, right? Everybody on this side of the field can tell you're not throwing it, right? If you have that ball in your hand, if he's behind your back, he can't necessarily tell. If you make that motion quick enough, it's gonna manipulate him in his eyes to kind of follow that throw. And he's thinking, oh, go, through the ball, right? So we're gonna work on what we were just working on, but we're gonna fake it, okay? I want you to work on trying your best to sell it. I've had guys literally run all the way up to home plate and I would just tag them as soon as they got there, right? So I promise you, if you get this down, it'll be a lot of fun. It's harder the older you get, but you're still gonna do it. You're gonna fake that throw and then you're gonna throw it to third, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna explode out of that box, anticipate the throw right from here, we're jumping out, we're selling it, you may still have that ball in your glove, right? But if we're throwing the third, you're gonna to want to have it in your hand. So we're faking it, and we're quick throw to third, okay? So I'll have Mason do a few with you guys, but it's just a quick motion to first, second, sorry, and then a fast motion to third. Okay, you may short third, it's fine. We gotta be quick. We gotta get that ball there quick before he realizes what's going on. So something that you guys can easily do at home, and this is a really cool skill to have. So we're gonna just do a few reps of this, and then you guys are good to go. You ready? Really, I want you to do is I want you to actually pump it, okay? And as soon as you pump it, I want you to reposition yourself to throw it to third, okay? This is the best part for you, okay? Especially at your age now, this is when you're going to start doing things like that. Thank you. Thank you. you can convince Coach Connor. All right, you can get this guy to feel prepared. Yeah, we got to have a quick transfer for this. Something you can do to kind of disguise the ball. Leave your glove in the air and just drop it as you throw it. So you kind of lose the sight of your hand and the ball as you come down together. That glove is just going to kind of like feel that ball. The quicker you pump it, the faster you can get it down here without it being, right? Don't the little fingertips, right? Oh, there's not a ball on that one. Another thing you can do, I know what you're doing, throwing the camping is good. Um, if you're selling that throw, keep your back kind of as possible. But even when you come down, 
So I kind of rotate my body with the muscle. Here, right? While it's quite right, it's going to be tense as you over it. All right. So last but not least, we're going to do a quick block and drop drill. It's going to be kind of like Simon says, like we played last time. So what I want you to do is set up balls, how the plate is. So you have the, the triangle, right? How we talked about, we're going to make a triangle with the balls. I'll show you, right? Just like we have here on this plate. All right. You have one, two, three. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna call out either one, two, or three, and that's where we're blocking. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit hard by keeping one in the middle. So one, two, three, right? So now we have the numbers mixed up. You have to be thinking about it, okay? You can't just be going through the motions. So now that you guys have an idea of how this is gonna work, base is gonna set up behind the plate. I'm gonna call out the number. All I want you to do is dry block for me, okay? Fall into position, act like you're blocking that ball. For you infielders, um, again, now we're gonna work on the banana. Drop that ball in front of you, right? You can either drop step, right? Practice sweeping through, replacing your feet and coming to the bag. Or something that's also tricky <coughs> is running through that ball, making that throw. A lot of people get caught up having that glove too close and they can't get it. Come out, keep that glove wide, start running to where you're throwing. Pick it up, replace your feet, throw that ball. Again, I'll show you real quick with this. All right, get that footwork down smoothly. For you catchers, if you're ready, we're gonna start the game, okay? Okay, so you're good to go. All right, two. There you go. One. Easy. Three. Nice. Three. Good. I like what I'm seeing. You guys are solid. Three. Nice. Way to pay attention. You guys are rock solid. One. Nice. Three. Nice. Two. Good. You guys are quick. I like it. Now you guys are subconsciously thinking about it, right? Because we added numbers into the pot. So in a game, you're not going to be thinking about it. You're going to be reacting. But since we're in practice, this is kind of benefiting both worlds. One. Nice. All right. On, these, on this next number I call, The runner is stealing. So show me what you would do after you block that ball. We're going to say whatever base you guys want. Whatever base you guys want. He's just stealing. Three. Nice. Good. Nice reaction, guys. Nice reaction. All right. I'm going to give you guys three more. Three more, okay? Two. Nice. Make sure we get our glove turned over and this hand, this extra hand behind it, okay? We have our other hand in front of our glove and that ball hits us, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna sting a lot. You could jam up before we break it. Three. Last one, two. Good, good work, good work. You guys are looking strong, very strong. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. All right, so you guys are rock solid. I'm glad to have you all back. Um, tomorrow is going to be another tea time, and then, again, the following day after that will be a tea time as well. So make sure you're stretching and you're not too sore. All right, hi, Hope your knees aren't killing you. Uh, other yeah. than that, you guys are good to go. Good job today. Thank you, Thank you. Hi,
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you. Adios. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. Hello. Hey. -o. All right. Good deal. What was it?